and welcome back to Who Would Win Speed Around number 18. No, sorry, 19. 19. Uh, and let's just get into it. Starting off, we have from Chilbuza? 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 Uh, you asked the question, who would have fight? Powerpuff Girls versus Homelander. I just did Homelander earlier this week, and I'll let me put it this way. It's a lot closer of a fight with Homelander and Hancock than it is with the girl. There's actually a fun little comic you can find on the, just YouTube of Homelander beating up the girl. Superman comes in, helps them. They geek out. He comes back swearing, and then they go and kick his ass. The Powerpuff Girls are just way beyond Homelander. They really are. Uh, like, they're... They are, again, speed, power, strength, all that. They actually really surpass him in terms of all of those. Plus, yeah, he's got heat vision, but honestly, so Bob, uh, Blossom's got fire breath, Bubbles. I, I know Bubbles and Buttercup have their own thing. Plus, there's three of them, and they're all at minimum comparable in strength and not way beyond. So they're going to be able to just completely bum rush his ass. Not to mention speed-wise, again, moves fast enough to go through time. It's just one of those things where they're not – he's not – and honestly, think about it this way. They can go so fast, they take him through time, assuming that doesn't kill him. They then head back in time and leave him in the future. <laughs> or leave him in the past and let him just age, age out and die. Like, yeah, the Powerpuff Girls would really just kind of clean Homelander's clock a little bit. So, yeah, I, I definitely take the Powerpuff Girls in that. Coming to us from, where is that guy? Ah, yeah. Uh, Optimus Convoy. Ghost Rider versus the Creeper. Um, again, there's a reason this is a one shot. Ghost Rider is just a being that the Creeper is not designed to handle. The Creeper, as mysterious, possibly somewhat mystical, demonic as he is, he's still basically a melee individual. He like he does physical damage. Ghost Rider can do that, but he also has Hellfire, which can literally burn your soul. He can literally eat your soul. If the Creeper is in fact a demon, that's <laughs> Ghost Rider laughs in his face. But the Ghost Rider at its full potential is a cosmic entity of unspeakable power. The Creeper is just a horror movie slasher monster. That's it. So, Ghost Rider gets that way. Coming to us from... Where are you? Uh, Liar Pants on Fire. bo 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 versus Gwenpool. The Battle of the Fourth Wall Breakers, except one of them is kind of... That's kind of all Gwenpool can kind of do. Now, apparently Gwenpool does have... the like, some capabilities that I'm not aware of, or at least from what some people have said. I'm going to get Gwenpool up here right now, just to be certain. Just to be sure that I am not completely insane here when I when I can find um, when, uh, if I can find um, Gwen, uh, you know, her powers. Uh, so, let's see here. Uh, Gwenpool. Uh, Gwen! Cause that's Gwenpool! Nah, just Gwen. Wouldn't that be funny if Gwenpool were to show up in Deadpool Wolverine? You know, Emma Stone shows. I don't know how, but see, that's the thing. I'd be hilarious to us big geekdom nerds, but that's all. That, that's it. That's all. Yeah. So, uh, so out of she has out of universe knowledge because she remembering reading countless adventure con, adventures delving into pirate the private lives of various superheroes with whom she interacts with. She possesses a vast knowledge of heroes alter ego. She's aware of writers' trademarks. Gwen's knowledge is limited by the amounts of comics she's read. For example, knowledge of Deadpool is very limited by the fact that she didn't read his comics. The information she knows is limited as well. Apparently, uh, her powers are limited to what she would be editorially allowed to do. Because of this, the trapster exile to the gutter's place was limited. So she actually is capable. She has one actual kind of ability. And that is, she can kind of, a medium interaction, she can kind of act like an editor of the universe of a comic she's read. But she only has powers of that of an editor. She can't just kill someone just for the sake of killing it. Uh, gutter space is essentially um, uh, like a space between, uh, you know, pages, more or less, in the comic. Uh, so, yeah. So she does kind of have a power. It's just Bumble is far and away from what everyone said, like, way beyond he's like outer versal whatever but that's because the bubble cartoon is literally toon force incarnate uh and it's and characters like that don't make for fun verses at least in my personal opinion characters who can do anything don't make for fun verses that's why superman is such a difficult one to do he can technically do anything although he's got at least some built-in weaknesses and limitations i can use to kind of compare and contrast 
Bobo, eh? Regardless, I give Bobo the win. Then coming to us from, uh, let's see here, Lord Raymundo. Who win a fight? Crackjaw from Lego Ninjago versus Ben Tennyson from the OG Ben 10. OG Ben 10. Every one of those aliens, except for Grey Matter, can beat Frackjaw, and Frackjaw can fright quite, uh, sorry, Grey Matter can quite frankly outsmart Frackjaw to just do something stupid. Frackjaw is nosely not very bright, and he's basically just a skeleton warrior thing. Every one of those aliens from the original Ben 10 could lay this guy down pretty hard. Uh, pretty much all, even Ditto Ditto could just, you know, or Ditto could just, like, overwhelm him with numbers. So, yeah, Ben 10 would take his ass out, no problem. Coming to us from, whoop, uh, let's see here. Coming to us from Isaiah Isaiah, uh, Isaiah Green. Sorry, this uh, these are the images I uh, use. Captain Adam versus Darwin, the uh, the mutant who can adapt to anything, or, or who has adaptive evolution, reactive evolution, I should say, versus Captain Adam. Uh, now this is probably the one that you know took the most thinking. Is Captain Adam enough to overwhelm his adaptation? Similar to how Hulk was. Hulk was so powerful that his body basically said the best way to adapt and evolve is to not be around this guy. <laughs> but Darwin is also adapted to be able to survive in space. Space. He countered the death touch of the goddess of death from North mythology, Hela. So he could match and adapt to insanely powerful individuals. But I think the reason Hulk was such a problematic force for him is because Hulk has no upper limit to his powers. And so he technically was something that because there was no end to how much energy he was like siphoning off, he, his body basically just said, get out of there. Captain Adam does not have that kind of limita uh, limitless uh, potential like Hulk does. So I would say Captain Adam, Unless Captain Adam knocked his ass out quick, Darwin would win the fight. Because he would just adapt to Captain Adam to the point where it wouldn't matter anymore. And then coming in in last place, well not last place, but coming in last, but certainly not least, is from user-y05. This is before I learned I could uh, click on the names and figure out who it was. Uh, we have Archer, Sterling Archer, whoop, versus Rick Sanchez. And I don't think anyone's going to argue this is going to be Rick is well, well and above the genius here. Uh, he's just as ruthless, if not more so, than Sterling Archer. They're both alcoholics to a certain degree, but one's more crippling than the other. But Rick can still function when he's a crippling alcoholic. And, still, and he's armed to the teeth with cybernetics that are all implanted in him alone. Not to mention his car can literally drag solar systems. He can only just send you to a different dimension. There you go. Sterling Archer is a savant secret agent. But, yeah, I don't see him really uh, taking the win here. Uh, honestly, these guys should probably just end up having a drink, if we're going to be honest, and just kind of talking about their woes. Uh, so, yeah, I do, I think, now, don't get me wrong, if these guys got in a handy and fight, Archer might win, but Rick's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, a Zeus-like god be alien. Guy, he ultimately lost the fight, but he was still able to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe. he's still capable of a hand-to-hand -hand fight, no worries. So, yeah, ultimately, I would go Rick on this fight, but if you think Sterling, I can't say... Sterling Archer, I can't say 100% against that either, because again, he is the younger, more fit individual here. Uh, regardless, though, that's, that's Speed Red. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you later.